Wearable technology promises to enable the next generation of human potential by augmenting our senses, intelligence, health, and empathy to transcendental levels. These 10 innovative 3D printed wearables do nothing of the sort because this is a silly video full of silly projects. You see, I challenge the Void Star community to develop Gizmo's 3D printable and IRL wearable and the best Borg bags of fully loaded $1,500 Lulzbot Taz Sidekick printer and five kilos of Retina overloading Greengate 3D filament. I called the contest hashtag HelloWearables because the cutoff was hashtag Halloween. You are about to witness 10 3D prints designed to slap, strap, or snap onto a consenting living creature. Seven are goofy, two are useful, one is useful and goofy, and you can download every single one of them with the links in the description or by searching hashtag HelloWearables on things.com. Our very first model proves that the only difference between a project and a wearable project is that the wearable project is wearable. Let's get rolling with number 10, Wearable Dice Tower by Dills42. Dice towers keep your random number generating platonic solids on the table and away from cheaty fingers, making them the perfect companions for your favorite tabletop role-playing game. That's right, Bionicle Quest for Makuta. But suppose you don't even have two square inches of table space because someone ordered pizza and someone else just had to order a second pizza because they're too blue-pilled to handle the pineapple. Pause the game? No. That's what they want you to do. The correct play is to strap the dice tower to your forearm, like a very large wristwatch, except instead of telling time, it tells the DM exactly how far your barbarian pounded the tavern keeper into the ground. Oh, I dropped the die. That's exactly what this thing's supposed to prevent. While this print will make your forearm as uncomfortable as you will make the other players, do bear in mind that this is the only dice tower to leave you in prime post nat 20 bird flipping position. This model needs a little modification. Uh, dice tend to get stuck on this lip, and printing these strap holes upwards makes them significantly weaker. But no matter how you, pun incoming, slice this, this right here is a delightful solution for a problem that never really existed in the first place. Based in pineapple pilled. Number 9, Jerk Juice by Repeated Failure. Behold the Jerk Juice, a wearable kinetic energy generator that translates linear motion into usable electric power. You strap it to your arm, repeatedly make aggressive back and forth motions, and each stroke sends a huge neodymium magnet flying through a coil, generating a tiny amount of alternating current. A full bridge rectifier converts that to DC, sort of, and a pair of modules forwards those hand pumped electrons into an internal battery or straight into your electronic wing doodle. Jour. The point I'm trying to make here is that even though this is a post in physical form, the author did a great job with this model and actually added a lot of thoughtful details to make it really shine. Things like these magnetic end stops to keep the magnet from smashing through the thing after a particularly vigorous thrust. The instructions and docs are actually really, really good, but this project just wasn't practical to build for this episode. Winding solenoids always takes like 15 times longer than you expect. This is cyberpunk as heck, and I know that the moment November ends, there is going to be a lot of linear motion to harvest. Dicks! We're talking about dicks! Number 8, Dip 8 Ring by Big Mike Kupka. Instead of a fancy jewel, this elegant little bend has eight tiny holes just waiting for you to slot in your favorite small integrated circuit. Express yourself, as well as which projects you bought way too many materials for, right there on your fingy wingies. For a timeless style, add a 555 timer. Amp up your drip with an LM386 amplifier. Are you proposing to a special lady gentleman or cyborgs? Diamonds may be forever, but only a DS1307 real-time clock will tell you exactly how long forever lasts. You're not limited to parts shaped like the main character of Space Station Silicon Valley either. OLED displays, breakout boards, jumpers, anything that would fit in a tiny 2x4 breadboard can now adorn your nasty nose pickers. Leave a comment with your favorite animal to possess in an esoteric 1998 N64 platformer developed by the same studio that made Grand Theft Auto. Big Mike customized the ring for different calibers of finger guns and even included a sizing chart so you can give any and everyone the gift of very large scale integration. If they start yammering about three months salary, that is a major red flag. Delete the gym, Facebook up, and hit your lawyer. Number 7, Wendigo Mask by Alejandro Boreno 1. 
I called this contest hashtag Hello Wearables because it ended on hashtag Halloween, uh, and not because I expected Halloween themed projects. Still, I saved a slot for a smidgen of Spoopy, and this mind blowing head mounted mashup of Dire Elk and Grimdark Cyber Goblin brings it. From the leering hollow eyes to the articulated snaggle tooth jaw to the three foot wide rack of snarled antlers, this is a crazy impressive build that will be just as impressive on your head as it would be mounted to your mantelpiece. Although now that I'm thinking about it, it's a bad idea to mount anything 3D printed to your mantelpiece. The antlers will go like... In order to print this beast, I had to run four printers for three straight days, but assembly was worse. Alejandro split the mammoth model into bite-sized chunks, complete with interlocking posts and sockets for strength. In fact, he did one better, because each joint has a different combination of round and square pegs, so only correct parts can fit together. It's really clever, I've never seen that before. Unfortunately, as cool as the model is, there is zero documentation whatsoever. There's no description, parts checked printing guide, assembly diagram, nothing at all. Here is a pile of STLs, figure it out if you can't get good scrub. But if you got the time and patience, this is a seriously impressive and seriously imposing 3D print. If the creator had structured and documented the project at all, this would have been a contender for first place. But as is, this thing will test your printer as well as your jigsaw puzzle skills. Number six, Roled Adjustable Ergob Wristband by Earthworm John. The idea here is simple. This is a latching wristband and a strip of WS2812 LEDs, aka NeoPixels, along with four capacitive touchpads and a diffusing outer shell. This is, in my opinion, the finest implementation of a 3D printed watch band I have ever seen. It's tougher than it looks, it needs nothing but filament, and has the super slick three-part clasp. The upper elements that I've printed in clear act as both cover and diffuser, which is pretty friggin' clever, but it reveals the main problem. See, when you bend something, the radius on the outside gets bigger. Anything mounted to it needs to stretch or slide to accommodate it, and a strip of ergobled tape does neither. So while the band is easy to don and doff, it is stiff as a board once the whole shebang is assembled. I managed to make it a bit more flexible by bending some relief into the strip, but the LEDs are never going to line up properly with the diffusers and they'll probably probably fall off eventually. There's no room in here for a processor or battery. Instead, you have to lead the wires off the project and into a smaller box, which really should have had mount points for a second printed strap. Our Analid author clearly got off to a great start, but faced the wrath of the deadline. I think with a bit more engineering, this would make an excellent beginner project, but as it stands, the parts are greater than the whole. This watch band is the best starting point I've seen yet for creators that want to make wearables from a single type of filament. What do I mean? by that? Well... Number 5, Wear a Breadboard by Yours Truly. I can't believe the cojones on me trying to sneak such a blatant conflict of interest past myself. Needless to say, I immediately snitched on myself to myself, who promptly disqualified my entry, and that would have been it, except I then blackmailed myself with incriminating selfies unless I put my own project in my own video. This bracket and strap lets you mount a functional breadboard right there on your arm, and it even contours a little bit to fit more comfortably. Now you can prototype your wearable projects and actually wear them! Yay! I designed and printed most of this thing live on stream, and mo in fact, most of what you see in this episode came together on stream as well. So this is actually a stealth plug for my live project hacking streams every Monday and Friday on twitch.tv slash Friedman. Our second place project actually started with this and seriously improved on it in a really clever way. But before we get to those top three prize winners, I want to show you a giant glowing robot spider. Number four, White Widow Animatronic Spider by Sholto. Did it work? Well, that definitely worked. <laughs> this massive mechanized arachnid precariously perches atop your punim, but even bolted to the sturdiest headband at Target, this thing is barely hanging on and it takes real suspension of disbelief to consider this wearable. It is not an easy build. You gotta get a sub-miniature gearbox motor, electronics, and of course, Ergobleds, and you also have to print over 75 intricate pieces. These are tough prints too. The legs are cleverly sliced so you don't need any supports or brim, but the intricate details call for an 025 millimeter nozzle and slow steady printing. Then you have the bulbous outer thorax pieces. They're big and curved and need a lot of support, and if you print them in clear material needed to let the Ergobleds shine through, there is nowhere to hide your sloppy printing. But I went ahead and made it anyways because this is one of the 
absolute most intricate projects in the contest and is certainly the most complex 3D print I personally have ever made. This thing has mechanical, sculptural, and even electrical elements that are well designed aesthetically and practically. The legs hang loosely and twin motorized camshafts flail them about in a delightfully spazzy way. Note how the motor only drives the legs upwards. Gravity pulls them down, so there is no chance of a leg being driven into your scalp. Smart. I ditched the original schematic and installed an Adafruit NRF52 Feather, so I can control this thing over Bluetooth. There's no cutout for a USB port, so you will have to strip it down to charge the battery or tweak the firmware, but at least there is a structural reason for this. The headband, gearbox, electronics, and ergobleds are mounted to this solid backbone, and all the thin cosmetic pieces just bolt on top. This beast should be lurking on a hard hat, helmet, or shoulder harness. A wimpy headband cannot support its scuttling girth. It's scuttling girth. Just another day at the office. All the projects up to this point have been my personal favorites, but we're now entering ranked competitive mode. These final three are designed so thoughtfully and documented so thoroughly that I think nearly anyone with a 3D printer can follow along. These creators' hard work and their consideration for other makers earned them Lulzbot store credit, Greengate PETG filament, and for the winner, a $1,500 fully loaded Lulzbot Taz Sidekick 747, the very same model I've been showing throughout this video. But enough hype. Third place goes to this eye-popping head-to-toe ensemble from an ultra reality, the Cyber Witcher cosplay by Oshikuru. This beautifully executed costume set mashes elements of the Witcher and Cyberpunk universes into a surprisingly harmonious whole. A chunky hunk of mandible armor evokes Geralt's signature stubble while making a nod at the teeth on the Witcher wolf sig sigil. The Witcher's wolf signal. Sigil. Sigil. Witcher's wolf sigil. That same icon appears on the back of the glowing jacket, flanked by spell runes and backlit by ergobleds, embedded right into the fabric. The piece de resistance is a full-size take on Geralt's silver sword with inscribed runes and a transparent edge that glow from within via carefully concealed neopixel strips. This is an unbelievably ambitious build that I would normally consider too difficult to recommend to anyone except Oshikuru put an unbelievable level of work into the documentation, templates, and design for printing. The sword pieces are clearly labeled on the inside, the jacket emblem prints onto cloth so all the pieces stay aligned, and they even provided printable cutting templates to simplify the fabric work. I straight up ran out of time before I could build this because I just could not resist challenging random NPCs to Gwent. And when I, was, when I finally opened up enough time, I just fell right through the sidewalk. Second place goes to the Wrist Pie by Arrow Raider. I have used a lot of Raspberry Pis in wearables. In fact, my very first self-contained heads-up display was built around a Raspberry Pi that I crudely velcroed to my arm. If I had the super slick three-part arm piece, I probably wouldn't even have bothered with the goggles. The Wrist Pi securely holds a Pi 4 and a 3.5 inch touchscreen while leaving the SD card and all the ports exposed and ready to use. Don't worry about the heat either, there are plenty of ventilators ventilation holes all over the place, and I've had this one running as an Octoprint server for over a week now, and I haven't had any thermal problems at all. Oh shit, my printer's on fire. Aero Raider took the Wera Breadboards TPU strap design and made it thinner, more robust, and easier to put on, despite what the previous reel will show you. But what I really appreciate is the thought put into building the project yourself. Nothing here needs support material and everything is provided pre-oriented for optimal printing. Even though that bottom plate could have been made in one piece, Aero Raider split it in two to reduce warping and the odds of it detaching mid-print. The instructions are also phenomenal, with specific guidelines lines on printing, assembly, parts, usage, everything. If more creators put this much thought and care into helping others make their projects, the maker community would spend more time finishing projects and less time scratching their heads. Bravo! Our grand prize winner started with a brilliant idea. They executed it beautifully and they wrapped it up so tightly that nearly any home gamer can follow along. This is also one of the only projects here that I could actually see myself and Brooke wearing in public and no off the shelf product could turn heads like this. That was a pun because first place goes to the wearable spine by Dave Makes Stuff. 
This morbidly magnificent mod kit lets you mount an unnervingly detailed set of vertebrae to any jacket, hoodie, or shirt. Dave started with a real scan of a human spine and hand tweaked each bone to make it more durable, easier to install, and more comfortable to wear. The cherry on top, the, the thing that sent this over the edge, is the set of 3D printable stencils that make it trivial to perfectly position each one of the 17 segments. Just remember, mounting anything to the middle of your back is inherently dangerous, because if you take a hard fall, you're putting pressure on your, your real spine. I printed this in soft, flexible TPU, which complicated printing, but cut the odds of an injury becoming literally backbreaking. Between the torrent of drip, the thoughtful design, and the thorough instructions, and the sheer creativity that went into this thing, I am proud to bestow the Hello Wearables grand prize onto Dave Makes Stuff. His brand new Lulzbot printer and comically ginormous stack of filament is en route as we speak. He really put his back into it, and now I'm paying him back. The 10 or so prints in today's showcase are some of my very favorite Hello Wearables entries, but they barely account for one-fifth of the total. There's a magnetic back scabbard to carry your Nerf Blaster anime style. There's a necklace of skulls that pops off the printer ready to wear. There's even a wearable smoke machine to significantly increase smoke output, brother. And a kit to turn any shirt into scale mail. Use the links in the description or search hashtag Hello Wearables and Things.com to see all of today's models and the rest of this bananas battlefield in their instant loading 3D preview, and if you're on a phone, an authentic simulated augmented reality. Special thanks to our prize sponsors as well, Lulzbot and Greengate, who design and manufacture the highest quality printing gear right here in America. The Lulzbot Taz Sidekick has this unique V-bearing and belted Z configuration that makes it sturdy, quick, and precise right out of the box. And I mean that literally. This thing took like 10 minutes from unpacking to first print. I put a link in the description to their configurator so you can spec out your custom Sidekick. I went in-depth on Greengate filament in the last episode, but you should know that this is 100% recycled PETG. That's packaging waste that would otherwise just get buried in a landfill. So if saving the planet, supporting American family businesses, and eye-scorchingly obnoxious colors matter to you, go with Greengate 3D for your next project. Special thanks to our patrons, whose support lets me spend weeks printing projects instead of farting out a lazy vlog every four days to satiate a heartless algorithm. Our flabbergastingly fabulous collaborators are Vinayaka Patrick Thompson, Brian D. Swollen Nut, Chuck Faduk Small Dong, Reagan says watch out for bees. Wait, what? Jeremy Arnold, Sweaty Vag, and Command. I've hidden their names in this episode, like bees are going to be hidden all across this workshop for frickin' ever. Can you find them? Because I can't. Skill, artistry, technical excellence, empathy for other makers. These are all admirable traits, but the greatest virtue is giving me money. Big thanks to my lab assistant supporters, protagonist, talent democratic socialist, and pretty righteous dude. Lunchbob Squirt Pants, good suck. My Yiddish Mama, Ethan Gomes, Nino Gansitano, The Midnight Patron, What Patrons at Midnight, BLM and Friends, Arrow Raider, C. Harris, Azundo, Epon Man, Period Clots, Boulder Creek Yard, James, Sir Derpington of Derptopia, Bill Schooler, Taranak, Victor Vaughn, Brad Cox, Trans Rights, Michael Roche, Kronholm, Empty Box, Empty Box, Empty Box, Empty Box, Eddie, Erlab Brussels, Lydia K, Tinker Bear, the world's greatest drone pilot, Bot Grinder FPV, Rusty Flute, 410100, wait, that's 420! Olivier Yiptong, Ashley Coleman, my dog is a bear. Nathan Johnson, a blade of kitten, duck distribution specialist, and acquirer of stickers. Zoster, Granville Schmidt, the Antifa! Joe Harp, TKMK, the world's second greatest drone pilot, it is on! Sanforian, Bob Dobbington, Kevin DeGraff, Oleg Davidov, Powerful CCH, Philip, Varka, Akalia, always remember, but I forgot what. Curb, Joe Wilkinson, SXP, Roger Pinkham of the Great Star Theater, Cats, one handful of beans. Aiden P, Burbasaur did nothing wrong yet. Zach, Frantic Fanatic, Rolando Alvarez, and finally, some totally platonic clopping for its 2021, and I still go to My Little Pony conventions. Thanks for watching, thanks for making stuff, thanks for letting me use the word platonic twice in one video, and thanks for showing me all your cool crap. This contest is done, but there are more on the way, so maybe I will see your project and you will see some prizes in the future.